Hey, what's going on guys? Zed here, bringing you another Soul Calibur 6 video. Today, we're going to be talking about frame traps and clash setups and frame data and anything to do with kind of uh, frame concepts. And I'm going to show you different ways that you can use frames to your advantage. So this video is going to be a little more advanced than the ones that we that you'll typically find on this channel, uh, as typically I, I like to dedicate my stuff towards newer intermediate level players. So this video is going to be for people who feel like man you know Zed I've loved everything about my character or so I think and I kind of just want to take my own game to the next level I'm not too worried about matchups or punishment but I want to be I want to be an expert with my own character right now for the record this video is not going to be specific to Shenghua I'm just most familiar with this character so I'm using her as my example and so I'm going to go over some really complicated concepts in this this video that may not be suitable if you're a beginner but if you are new to the game or new ish and you just kind of want to see what the depth is of frame data and how um, higher level players use the concepts uh, this would be a good video for you so I guess the best thing to start with is just what explaining what frame data is and, and what we're actually working with so essentially frame data is just the numbers of frames it takes out of 60 frames right because of 60 frames per second um, the number of frames a move takes to come out or recover or how long it's active so to reword that there are three stages to a move you have the startup the meaning before the move becomes an actual hit you have the duration in which it is an active hit that's called the active hitbox and then you have the recovery animation or what happens after it's blocked or after you've hit the opponent so for example, the startup on a move like 3B, it takes, for Shanghua anyway, about 18 frames to actually become an active hitbox. Meaning there is an 18 frame window of 60 frames, right? And 60 frames being a full second. Uh, there's an 18 frame window in which I could be hit out of this in theory, okay? In theory. And it remains active for approximately two to four frames. It's really hard to gauge that kind of thing and test it. And then the recovery on block is punishable, right? So if, if, if it's blocked, then you can see that Sophia can and will get a punishment action on me. Um, just for example's sake, I'm just going to pick this. Okay, boom. There you go. And even though I was holding block, I got hit. So that's means I got punished now again this video is going to be for those who are looking to take their game to the next level or those who are interested in this kind of thing so I'm gonna assume you already know what moves are punishable on your character and what punishment data is so I'm gonna kind of skip over that that's kind of what frames are and that's what you're working with every move has them and every move needs it um, and really it's what these games are based around next thing is what a clash is so a clash occurs when uh, both you and your opponent swing and attack at the same time and you kind of you get that little ting that that spark the the silver clash and That happens when moves active hitboxes connect at the exact same frame and The different levels of moves the horizontal attacks the vertical attacks and the kick attacks So ABK all have different clash powers That determine whether or not you win the clash now that's confusing and so we're gonna get into that but the basis is that vertical attacks will always beat horizontal attacks um, and and almost always and generally speaking kicks just don't clash uh, if I don't actually I don't even think kicks can clash um, so yeah there's things like that but you can also get trades now trades are gonna happen when you use moves that are non clashable but they are occurring on the same frame so this is usually what happens with kicks if not always again um, so for example, if I was to hit a kick attack at the exact same time as Sophia, we would both hit each other at the same time instead of clashing. So there's a little bit of a difference there. That's called a trade, not a clash. There's a, there's a difference. Okay. So that's kind of what clashing is. And we're going to, that's mostly what this video is about. So we're going to get into that. And then frame traps, the term frame trap means you've put your opponent in a situation where they cannot do X, Y, or Z and you're forcing, or rather they can't do X or Y and you're forcing them to do Z or another option. Um, and this is 
a very useful offensive mechanic because generally it forces the opponent to respect you. So frame traps generally occur when you are uh, plus frames. So when you use a move that leaves you positive on block. There's very few of those in the game, but every character has a couple. Um, some are easier to use than others. And essentially what it does is it makes your follow-up action that much faster. So for example, if I am plus 10, right? So this move is plus 10. If I'm plus 10, anything I do after that is going to now be 10 frames faster. So if Sophidia tried to use an attack that would reach me, let's say, I don't know, uh, her 6-6-A, very powerful, common move, um, right? So say she did this, and she ran up, she tried to do that, right? Well, because I'm plus 10, I can just swing a slower attack and get and hit her no problem, okay? So that that's what I mean by plus frames. So with those three very basic explanations out of the way, because <laughs> all three of those concepts, you could be like, ah, but actually, <laughs> nerd, and no. <laughs> that's not what this video is about. Frame traps and class setups, that's what we're talking about. So I want to show you some examples. I want to talk about the metagame. I want to talk about some of the options you can do and why they work. And I would say that this is one of the main things that separates um, like intermediate players from advanced players because if you have good movement and your punish, your punish game's okay and your decision making's okay and you assume all that is even, the, the biggest problem you're going to have, uh, let's say in an even matchup, is going to be maintaining your offense. and. It's pretty hard to win in Soul Calibur playing very defensively. It's totally possible, but it's tricky. So applying frame traps in appropriate situations is a very powerful tool that you should probably learn uh, how to do. And some characters are better at it than others, for sure. For example, like some characters with good frame traps would be uh, Taki, Zaslamel, Shanghua, um, Amy, Raphael. Raphael's got a lot of frame data to understand, so he'd be he'd be a lot of effort to look into. But those kind of characters, very good at using their frame traps. Characters not so good at it would be like um, like Ivy, Geralt, um, Songmina. Characters that don't really generate a lot of good frames on block uh, gen or on hit, even um, generally don't have very good frame or. Uh, yeah, frame traps and so it's about exploring your character and looking at what their strengths and weaknesses are so anyway enough of that let's just show you a few examples and talk about why they work or a few different situations so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to show you uh the easiest example to demonstrate and that is shanghua's 44a hold and her 22k is the exact same thing so we're going to go over both of those so shanghua's 44a hold is plus two on block and oh sorry didn't have her do anything and essentially what this move is for is it allows you to so it's a mid high but it jails and jailing means that there's no room to duck the high so you'll see here mid high and you know she couldn't duck there so this is plus two now Sophia is using her 2a attack which is 12 frames and so if I'm plus two and Sophia is using her 12 frame, depending how your mind works, because you, uh, you can think of it in two different ways. Either A, your move is two frames faster, or B, their move is two frames slower. Whatever is easier for you. Generally, for most people, it's easier to understand that your moves are two frames faster because you probably know your frame data much better than you know their frame data, generally speaking, okay? So, Shanghua's crouch throw is 10 frames, okay? This right here. So, and my 2A is 12 frames as well. So with this concept in mind, how can we how can we apply this to this situation? If, okay, so I'm plus frames here and I want to generate my offense. Oh wait, but she's ducking my highs. Wait, what do I do? So a vertical attack will clash with a horizontal attack and it will win the clash. Now, Zed, what do you mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is if you clash with the exact same frames, um, generally speaking, you'll both 
hit the same action. So <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll show you what I mean. So for example, if I pick her uh, triple B and I go for, which is 14 frames, and I go for my 16 frame vertical. So you can see here that we clash in the exact same way and this is neutral. Neither of us are plus, neither of us are minus. Um, and we can both block at the exact same time. So this is be an even clash. Okay. And this is because we're clashing two vertical moves. Now, likewise, if I go to use an I-16 kick, which in theory should clash, right? If we're, if we're going by this, you can see there we trade. And that's again, because we used a kick attack as opposed to a vertical to vertical. It was a kick to vertical situation or rather a kick to any attack situation. So we trade here. Okay. So that's what I mean by even clash is if we both use a vertical or we both use a horizontal and they clash at the exact same time, that's an even clash. If you use a vertical into their horizontal, that is a positive clash. So I'm going to show you an example of a positive clash. Now, a very common option against plus frames is to use 2A, 2K, or GI. Very common options, and the reason why is if you 2A, you're going to duck under their high pressures, right? So you'll see Sophia duck under my pressure because my I-10 now becomes I-8, which she can't really deal with, right? Um, if she two ways, then it's generally going to beat out some of my more slower vertical options to apply guard damage, right? And it'll also uh, catch me doing any other silliness. The other option is going to be to GI, and that would happen when the opponent thinks that you're going to press the attack with a fast button to follow up your plus frames with. So it's a little bit of a mind game meta game. So I'll get to, I'll get Sophia to do GI here. There we go. Right. So if I went to press the attack. Oh. <laughs> there we go. There you go. So you can see there, if I tried to like take advantage of my plus frames, and she went to GI uh, here, that I would, uh, that she would get a GI. Right. So that's another option or reversal edge same thing right same concept applies so if we did this uh reversal edge right so you get the idea um but now back to 2a so our first example of a very common clash setup that forces your advantage, meaning it's a positive clash setup, is going to be 4 4 a hold into 5B. Now, 5B is a vertical attack, and it's 16 frames, and it's a mid. So if I read this, Ophidia is going to go for 2A, and I-12 ducking attack, right? So 12, my I-14 at plus 2 now also becomes I-12. So the moves will hit on the exact same frame. So now watch this. So you can see there, it's a positive clash. I am now at full advantage. I believe you have about 18 to 20 frames to work with here. I'm not exactly sure on the math there. Um, but in the case of Shanghua, we're going to call this a 3B setup because I can do this, this, and boom. And that was entirely guaranteed. Okay. Boom, boom. Free launcher. Right. And all because the opponent went to go for 2A. Now, the interesting thing about this is that me going for 5B isn't even that bad because A, it's I-12 now as opposed to I-14. B, it generates decent pressure because I can stagger it. I can go B, I can go BB, -B, um, I can just go B, 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 right? I can stagger offense with 5B. The other thing is if she didn't want a 2A and she wanted to AA for whatever reason, um, now, there's something interesting about Sophidia. I picked her for a reason, and we'll get to that in just a second. Um, she went for AA. So you can see, it's the same clash. And the reason why is that it's still a horizontal. It's still I-12. And I still get the 3B for free. Now, here's the kicker. If I if I was playing against Sophidia, or Tira has the same thing, or even Shanghua has the same thing, uh, they can put some wrinkles in the mess, and so I'm going to jump through a couple different characters, and I'm going to show you different examples of how this works. But just before we uh, swap to a different character, I want to show you another option with Sophia. Her 5K is also 
I-12. Now, if you're playing against a character who has a kick attack as the I-12, you you have an interesting, or they have an interesting decision to make. Because now if I go for the same thing, we're going to trade, which is actually significantly better for them, right? Much better to do that than go for, like, than to give the Shenhua a clash, right? Much better. Because now, crap, now we're in a situation. Now, the interesting decision is on the Shenhua player. Because if I read that she goes for 5k, sure, I can get a crouch launcher, full crouch 3b. But that's like a hard read. And if I go to do that, she's going to 2a, or she might 2a, right? Now, what if I go to 2a? What happens then? Oh, well, we beat her. But we only got 12 damage off her frame trap. Hmm, okay. But let's take that one step further. So now we've hit her out of the 2A, but that's a counter hit 2A. And a counter hit 2A puts you at significant frame advantage. Now, this thing is very hard to replicate in uh, in a training mode environment. Um, but let me just show you to the best of my abilities kind of what that would look like. So we're going to turn counter hit on. And we're going to have Sophie get hit by the 2A. And then I'm going to have her do... <coughs> pardon me. And then I'm going to have her do her 2A. Uh, so here we go. Da, 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 da. Let's just make sure that works properly. Yes. So again, her 2A is 12 frames. Well, isn't that interesting? I went to use an I-16 while rising move, and it beat her 2A. That means I was at least plus four. Let's go one step further. Wait a minute. I get an I-18 move now, which means I was plus six. That's crazy, right? And so you're going to go through and you're going to test your moves and you'll realize like, okay, well now when I start to get slower than I-18, she beats me out. So a 2A counter hit, that's plus six. That's a lot of frames, right? So... Now we've set up this scenario. So let, let's just imagine that we've done 4-4-A, four, four, hold, and she went for 5K and we did 2-A. Now we can kind of pressure with a full crouch 3-B as Shenghua's full crouch 3-B is, um, is safe, right? So it, it's not really scary for me to do this, right? And then now we're going into PXS mix-up and the combo actually did more damage at 62 as opposed to the standard uh, like 53, 52-ish. And the reason why is the full crouch 3B would counter hit. And so what I'm displaying here is it's important to understand the situations you're put in defensively. Because if someone counter hits you with a 2A, say you went to step, right? And they, like, you try to sidestep and I 2A you, right? It's important that you respect the fact that they are plus four to six, depending on the move and the situation, okay? So that's what I kind of wanted to show here, all right? Um, the other thing that I want to show, again, before I showcase a couple other interesting dynamics, is um, an example of a zero on hit situation. So in this case, I was showing you a plus two situation. Okay, so again, we're going to have just guard all. And I want to have the same move, the 2A. Here we go. Yeah. So in this situation now, Shanghua has a very powerful low. It's a low high string, uh, and that's full crouch 3A. And it looks like this. This move is very, very good. Um, it's very easy to execute in neutral, um, just suddenly. And it's about 20, 24 frames if I do it in this fashion. Uh, give or take, it depends on execution. Now, this move is a... Uh, natural combo string, meaning if the low hits, the high hits too. Right, so you can see here, I have Slafidia set to guard all standing, so she won't crouch block, and uh, and so on. Now, this is kind of where things get really interesting. So on a zero on hit situation, nobody is at advantage. However, the Shenghua is generally advantage. And the reason why is there's a little bit of a mix-up here on the defender's part. And there's options they have to consider. Therefore, their reactions will be a hair slower. Therefore, it's more accurate to say that this is plus two on hit in terms of mental frame advantage. But the reality is at zero. 
So let's show what happens if I try to run through some of Xionghua's options and what kind of different situations it can put her in. So let's just have her do BBs for now, okay? So I'm gonna do full crouch 3AB, and this is designed on purpose to catch people hitting any button for the most part. Big caveat there, for the most part, okay? So the reason why someone would get hit by this is either A, they don't know about it, or B, they thought that I was just gonna do this into like a backstep, right? So you can see there, she actually caught me with a run counter, all because I tried to backstep here, okay? So, this is one one option that this move would be used. Now let's try full crouch 3 AA, let's see what happens there. So, kind of the same thing. The difference being that this would be someone who's hitting a button immediately and they're kind of just mashing out an input. So not a great choice. But now what happens if, or now what happens if I go into stance? So this is full crouch 3A hold, right? And she swings there, what can I do? Well, we can sidestep it in this case, cause it's a vertical, right? Right, so you can see there, I've counter hit. Now I've set up a tech trap situation and it's kind of just this whole Right, so you tech to the right, awesome. But if she techs back, again, due to not knowing, or <laughs> of course, of course it fails as I try to showcase. Right, so now I put her in a tech trap situation, which is not good, right? That's not good, because now she's taken all this damage because she was getting a too antsy on defense, right? I'm trying to press the attack too much. So again, this is one example, just but let's break it down and say she does the smart defensive option, which would be, or one of the smart options. And that's gonna be 2A. So let's, 2A is a very powerful move. I've talked about it in a couple of my recent videos, uh, for example, five caliber and how to learn the game of full caliber. 2A is a very powerful tool. You gotta learn to use it. You gotta learn to love it. So now all of a sudden, if I go for this, oh, she didn't execute it right. If I go for this, <laughs> what she can do is slightly crouch and then 2A, and that would beat out uh, that would beat out any of there we go any of my buttons. All right. Well, so she can crouch here and simply avoid it. Uh, that would be one option here. There we go. There. <laughs> so if she crouches this and then two A's, that's a pretty smart option. Um, the problem with that is is if she goes to two A here, but then I went into stance, because then I would get this lethal hit. Again, a little frustrating to demonstrate, but I'll show you and we'll swap characters in just a second so I can showcase how that works. Okay. Now, if she goes to 2A and I do just standard full crouch 3A, again, we're talking about an on hit situation, zero on hit, okay? Right, so in this situation, this is what I'm talking about, and I go to 2A, oops, it's an even clash if I go to 2A. So now this gets really interesting because not only do I have these various options, so if you try to step the B attack, which you can do, this will catch you stepping. If you try to hit a button immediately without crouching first, this will hit you, right? And if you respect the fact that I'm going to use either of these options and I go into stance, now I'm applying pressure to you, okay? And then if I just do nothing and you just go to 2A instinctively, Shenghua has an option. So her 2A is gonna be pretty much everything that Shenghua can do. However, because you can see there, I can't actually backstep because Shenghua thinks, at least at close range. Um, so let's say I'm at this range, right? There we go. So there I can backstep. But in most cases, you're gonna be right in front of their face. So backstepping is out of the equation. So now Shenghua has some options to do here. I could do a delayed version of this. Garbage. Garbage. Right? I could do that auto GI. Or if I want to have no risk at all, and I think 2A, I could use this auto GI, because the GI window is longer. 
Or, of course, I could use this GI, right? I can use my auto GIs. Or, because I'm Shenghua, I can actually crouch throw here. And the reason why is the crouch throw is 10 frames, and 2A is 12 frames. Therefore, and she's going into a crouch state. So if the opponent is aware of all these different things that Shenhua can do on a zero on hit situation, again, keep that in mind, it becomes really, really difficult. Now, let's say the Sophidia is like, all right, I see you, I see you. I'm going to use a vertical, right? I'm going to challenge you with a vertical and, you know, see how that goes. Well, the problem with this logic is that uh, Shenhua has an I-12 vertical. So now, right, so you can see here, again, if I use this, oops, sorry, even clash, okay? But now if I go to do this, I win, okay? So this is just part of the mind games here. And so what I'm showcasing here is the amount of depth that something as simple as a zero one hit situation can go because of how many options both characters likely have in their given situation. Now, I'm just gonna cut to me on a different character, or not a different character, uh, I'm gonna swap characters here entirely and I'm going to pilot the other character so I can showcase um, some of the options that Shenhua can do and then how to properly defend against them. But again, I'm gonna show you more weird frame trap situations uh, that can occur in some characters or with some characters and some matchups okay so nightmares a really interesting one um, because of the fact that he doesn't have a 12 frame attack so you'd think well okay then if nightmare doesn't have fast frames then that must mean that frame traps are really good against this character right kind of sort of so we talked about earlier in the video uh, the the 44A plus two example. So we're gonna we're gonna stick with that example for now. So let's do. Mm, it's a good example. Let's do 44A into B, right? Let's say. No, it's not realistic. Let's say 44A into 3B. Okay, let let's say that. So 44A into 3B. Now this is a really interesting situation because nightmare actually can't punish Shenhua's 3B because it's only minus 12. And I'll show you something else. So let's say 4 for a 2A. Let's show this example first. So she's plus frames here, and I'm going to challenge those plus frames with armor, okay? Or I'm going to challenge those plus frames with my critical edge, okay? But... What happens if the Shenhua goes to use a move that breaks through armor? Well... Well, now all of a sudden, you're kind of at a loss, and there's nothing you can really do about it. Now, if you know, if you're Nightmare, and you know what move she could use that would be fast enough to not be able to challenge, and still break through your armor, that tells a whole another story. So... The example that the, or a good nightmare option would be to sidestep here. Because the Shenhua, at worst, or like to catch you from doing that, she would either 6A, 5A, or 2A. Which none of those options are really all that scary for Nightmare to take, and they can all be armored through anyway. But if the Shenhua knows that, there's a really interesting. Uh, method she can use to kind of check that so let's say let's say i read that as nightmare oh <laughs> of course okay let's relax there we go so let's say i go to do that situation right and the shenhua is reading the fact that i'm going to do punch uh, like sidestep punch um a really interesting thing that that shenhua can do would be to or rather 6k sorry is what i meant to do the reason why this vertical is clipping by the way is because when you're at plus frames you technically have your opponent has less frames to step and so sometimes the startup and the active hitboxes can be uh, a little more deceptive than they should be 
as well nightmare has a bit of a wider hitbox on his arm side and that's the way i was getting clipped so a uh, few tidbits of information there to keep in mind anyway say the shanghua reads the fact that i'm going to do that and and for the record i've done this in a game before and now all of a sudden she goes to do this situation so what, what's happening here is i'm stepping into 6k versus her plus frames okay so now right we kind of trade here right but if i go for sidestep into a delayed armor move oops well now all of a sudden she can kind of blow me up for that right so what does nightmare do in this situation well that's a really hard call to make because there's not much he can do now if she goes for high attack pressure you can still 2a okay um or if she goes for the 3b you kind of just have to understand that there's no good defensive option. So it's very wise of you to just hold the plus frames. And this is why I got into to Nightmare here. This is why I wanted to showcase this example. Is sometimes the best option is nothing at all. Okay? Because the only way that Shunghua is going to be able to loop plus frames on you is going to be either doing this twice like that right or doing this into this very slow very telegraphed um or using this into her break attack which is a high so any way you slice this there's no way that Shunghua can keep the pressure up so you can likely expect or you can likely just hold this and be fine now again let's take it one more level okay say the shonghua is aware of the fact that nightmare kind of wants to just hold these plus frames okay what he can then do about that is either jump attack or critical edge it's a good option or he can entirely just or this is be a situation where he could gi right um these various things are all good answers okay so if you're playing a character or you're in a situation where you kind of just want to hold that it's very good to all of a sudden gi whereas in the sophidia matchup it's less advisable to gi and it's quite smart actually to throw out your 5k all right so it entirely depends on your character what your options are things you can do um ways you can challenge it right so again if we if we get shenhua um do 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 let's say she goes to do this right to read armor which is a fair this is a fair read well, if you jump attack, that's an option because now you're going to jump over 2A and other lows. and and But then you're not going to get full comboed because you're airborne and stuff like that. The other thing that you might see from the Shenhua is 3A or 2K. So the reason why you might see this is because it beats out armor options. It beats out critical edge and... Uh, being an I-18 and plus 2 is I-16, which is faster than most of Nightmare stuff that would hit her. And basically his option, I believe, yeah, is to 3k. And that's kind of all he can do against her 3a. And her 3a will literally beat every other option that he has. Including backstep. So it's very important to know the situations and to figure out... The various frame options that your character has now would i say that you should know every characters yeah eventually but that takes forever like i'm still learning different frame traps and we're still finding new frame traps for the record okay so 
I hope that this whole situation kind of showcases some different options. Um, the last thing I want to show is going to be... I'm going to swap characters again. The last thing I want to show is another situation that has to do with characters with auto GIs or parries or um, stuff like that. That actually, it creates a frame trap when you're minus on block. So that's kind of the last thing I want to show you uh, before we wrap up the video. So I'm just going to swap characters again and we'll get right into it. Okay, so I swapped... Back to Shanghua, and we're gonna we're gonna show some interesting things against Tira. So, what's interesting about Tira in in a frame trap situation, or a, rather a clash setup situation, is that she has 4K, and 4K is a really interesting risk reward option that you have to consider when you're when you're going for these various setups against her. And the reason why is if she swaps like that, I didn't execute it right. But she gets a full combo. Okay. At least from Jolly. For example. Right. So, now all of a sudden, my... Right, the frame trap options are less, less inviting. We don't particularly want to do them uh, because of this move. And this is a move that you do want to respect to some degree um, oh sorry so you can see here go for a class setup and we trade but but here's the interesting thing notice how I still got stunned okay so now we've created a really interesting situation where there is a world where I'm giving her a free swap and I'm getting stunned, and she's plus, all because I went for my own class setup. Isn't that interesting? So a move like this can be very, very frustrating to deal with in some characters' clash situations, or clash setups and frame trap situations, because you have to respect the fact that it can lead to a full combo, it can give her a swap, and it, it, at the worst case scenario, you can see here, worst case scenario, she's plus because now she's recovering faster than I am, right? So this is a really big deal, right? This is a really big deal when it comes to playing against uh, Tira. Now, what I want to show was the last situation where you can set things up on minus frames if you have some kind of evasive move, auto GI, parry, armor, anything like that, tech crouch, tech jump. Now, this is going to be much more broad and applicable to more characters in general. Um, so arguably, maybe I should have done this first, but whatever. Um, and that is if you use certain frames that are minus, say it's minus eight on block, and your move tech crouches on frame four, if you do the math, that means you're going to tech crouch 12 frame moves. Okay. So, I'll give you an example. We're going to have Tira block a full crouch 3B from Shenghua, which is minus 8. And then I'm going to use a move that tech crouches um, at frame... Well, rather, let's do this. Let's have, let's have her block my 5AA, which is 10 frames. And then go for her 5K, which is a high, and it's 12 frames. And I'm going to use a move that tech crouches immediately. Oh. Sorry, not sure why she did that. So you can see here, I didn't actually get hit by that. Now, if you notice, that if I don't use the move, I get hit by it. And if I just raw crouch, I duck it. But, say we were using a move that, you know, tech crouched instantly, like frame one, frame two kind of thing. And this is an example. Now, all of a sudden, I'm ducking the kick. But if I use a move that's minus eight, and I go for a move that tech crouches a bit later, I'm still not going to get it, right? So now what you want to do would be something like um, uh, something that's minus six, right? So at minus six, all of a sudden, some of these moves become more, more okay, good, uh, become more realistic and more more viable to use in a tech crouching format okay 
So, say... I'm trying to think. What's a good example? I thought that that one would be a good example. It's not. <laughs> In any case, <laughs> you can use frames to use evasive moves as like a read option right so if you read that they're going to do a certain thing uh then you can use your frames to take advantage of that of that aspect is my point in the case of shanghua i'm going to display some parry options and they're quite interesting so first being that she has auto gi setups do 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 so say that I read that she was going to use a horizontal to challenge my minus 8 here, right? Which is a fair assumption, because I'm minus 8, now this I-12 becomes I-20, and you're good to go. However, this auto GI auto GIs on frame 4. So again, if we do the math, we put the two together, it would auto parry things that are 12 frames. And this parry lasts for 8 frames. Now, if you do, if you add the math, if you're with me, that means I can auto GI anything from frame 12 to 20. So if she does any 12 to 20 horizontal move, I'll auto GI it. Okay. So, boom, boom. Okay. Boom, boom. So there's that, and same thing goes for verticals. If they have uh, vertical attack, let's say she does BB, so again, I-14 six or uh, I 14 rather, the exact same thing is going to happen. Oh. What was that? Why did she... There we go. Um, so you can see here that I'm just able to auto GI it, and you're ready to go. Now, in the case of a character like Amy, things can get a little more complicated because Amy has high, middle, and low parry as opposed to horizontal and vertical. So in the given matchup, she can go for like many different options as well. Her parry, like she can use it the exact same way, except her parries, if she whiffs, it doesn't matter because she can still generate pressure, right? With her stance games. So, uh, but the same concept still applies. If she's minus eight and she goes for a parry, boom, you're gonna get dinged. And so you kind of have to play around this and respect the fact that Shonghua is minus eight as a defender, unless you decide to use a kick attack. Now, say you use a 5K. Oh, is she doing that? There you go. Uh, it's gonna hit me, right? Same thing, if I go to do 4A plus B, it's gonna hit me, okay? But, then that comes out. So most 5Ks, oddly enough, are actually horizontal attacks. Okay, so you can see here, I can't actually step. That's a run counter. Right? So you can see here, this is a horizontal. So I can actually 4A here. And now, I'm going to catch horizontals, and I'm going to catch 5K challenges, which are I-12, because they're horizontal. And I'm also going to catch 2A challenges with this one. So now we've put ourselves in a really interesting position on defense because now we have to consider whether or not the Shenghua is going to go for the 4A, which is totally safe on block anyway, and it covers essentially two-thirds of the options you could use. What I mean by two-thirds is it beats um, like horizontal attacks and horizontal kick attacks, so maybe more like a quarter. It beats out a quarter of your options that you would want to use while still being plus and catching step and so on and so on right but if your character has a vertical kick that's going to beat out all of the options okay so again we talked about tiras 4k earlier so now it's a bit of a risk reward now i can't 4a it i can't 6a plus b it and i can't 4a plus b it the only thing that in theory i would have time to do which you don't because of frames, is that, which is 4-4-B uh, plus K. And if you do this, you would have to use it on a move that's minus 4, but we're not going to go quite that far into that. 
uh, today. So let me see if I can get a quick, quick example here. There you go. Just for example, I know the bot isn't executing 4K from Crouch, but you get the idea, right? So this would be the only way that I'd be able to really call her out for that move. Um, so 4K is a very powerful tool for Tira, is my point. Now the last in interesting thing would be if she called out an auto GI and you had armor, but specifically you had like Nightmare Armor, or Siegfried Bubble, um, Astaroth Soul Charge, or Tira. So, I could have picked any of those characters, but again, I came back to Tira. Really interesting thing would be if you went to use this. So let's look at this move. Revenge Attack, may trigger personality change when successful, it has no properties. That move is this. Now this armor is a little wacky in that if you hit it once, Sorry. You have to hit her after her head kind of leans back like that. Like that. And then she'll grab you. So. So. Against the faster options off of minus eight. Or, sorry. Yeah. So you can see here that if I go for the auto GIs, it doesn't really work. Okay, not a, not a good option. But what she can do with it is she can kind of call me out for poking after my minus eight. Right, like that. For example, is this a good option? Not really, I just want to show you. So if the opponent starts to respect or starts to give me the respect that I, I've earned, um, all of a sudden I can start doing this into 3B, or this, into this, right? Stuff like that. And um, so you really layer on the defense, or layer on the offense, and it forces layers on the defense. And so again, what, what we're demonstrating here in this last section is just that even if your minus frames on block, you can still take advantage of said minus frames in order to do something. And a very basic, very, very basic universal example would be if I did anything and the opponent went to 2A, like say, or 2K, how about how about this? You're in a low health situation. Here you go. You're in a low health situation, right? And that 2K, why'd she do that? That 2K would kill you, okay? This move would kill me, right? Let, let's theoretically say that that's, that's the stage we're at in the game. Even though I'm minus on block, you can still jump it. Okay, so this would be the most universal example for sure, uh, in that using jump attacks, they tech jump essentially frame two, um, almost always, and uh, so you're able to jump over lows if you make that read. And jump attacks in Soul Calibur, while underrated, they're quite good in general, because if you're wrong, and say she didn't do a low, and say all she did was like A string, right? That was a bad example. Um, how about this? Say she went for... I don't know. It doesn't really matter. But something not that fast. <laughs> there. The point I'm trying to show is that like you're going to get aerial... And so that's not the worst situation for you in a given scenario. Now, the reason why it wasn't working there was because I didn't actually have the frames to input the jump attack and actually get off the ground before she hit me. And so that's something else you really want to look at and consider is like, well, how long do I have? There we go. How long do I have before I'm considered airborne, right? All different things to consider when you're looking at your moves. And most characters' frame data documents will have this information on there. Um, or if you go to eight, if you go to 8-Way um, Run and you look at the frame data from that website, um, it'll also say, like, Tech Crouch frame 4 to, 4 to 16, or Tech Jump frames 8 to 12, stuff like that. Uh, or starts on frame 16, things like that. They'll, all that information will be on there for you. 
um, to look at, if not your own character's Discord document uh, as well. So, with that, it's going to wrap up the video. It's hard to pull specific examples because there are so many in the game. There are so many versions of frame traps, clash setups, um, and interactions you can do to challenge the given setups depending entirely on your character and their character and the matchup as a whole. So I know this one ran uh, long. If you've struggled through till the end here, I hope you learned something. I hope maybe this shows you that frame data is very important. And I also want to remind you that this was the most basic, basic rudimentary level of this stuff that can get so much more complicated. Are they going to move? Are they going to GI? RE? Do nothing? Jump attack? 2A? Are they going to backstep me? Are they going to challenge me? If they have an I-10, oh man, that really puts a wrinkle in things. I didn't even go over that. But characters with 10 frame attacks like Raphael, Amy, Yoshi, Taki, Shenhua, Cassandra, they really screw up frame traps and frame situations so hard. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer them as I read all my comments. And let me know in the comments what kind of videos that you want to see. Because generally I just make what I feel like. And so if there's any specific topic you want me to cover, uh, that's the place to tell me. And I will uh, consider it from there. So again, thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you on the next one. Have a good rest of your day.